Hey friends, today over here at the Starlings, we have a lot of fall fun happening. So I thought I would take you along and show you what we're gonna do today, share a couple of recipes and a couple of activities that you might wanna do in your homeschool. So come along with us and I'll show you what we've got going on for fall. So if you're new here, I'm Peggy. I'm a homeschooling mom to seven children. My husband Andy and I have been married for 12 years. I make videos about homeschooling, homemaking, and family discipleship. Okay, let's get started with a nice little fall coffee recipe. I'm gonna show you something simple that I do just to make my coffee a little more fall, but still pretty healthy and clean ingredients. So I'm gonna show you that. I'm using an espresso machine, but you could certainly do this with just regular coffee. If you wanted something a little stronger to make it more espresso-like, you can double brew your coffee to make it stronger, or you could create iced coffee that way by uh, brewing it double strength and putting it in the fridge. You can make an iced coffee and do something similar. So let me show you what I'm doing to make kind of a fall inspired coffee. All right, here's what I'm gonna be using. Milk of your choice, some ice, some pumpkin pie spice, and a little bit of maple syrup. And we're gonna make a spiced maple latte with some raw milk. So I realize for fall, I should probably do a warm drink, but I am in Florida and Florida fall days sometimes are in the 60s, which is a little chilly to us but today it is 80 degrees outside, so it's not quite time for a warm drink. That'll happen more like January or February. So I'm making this iced, but you could also do this warm also. Just steam your milk or warm up milk in the microwave or on the stove or whatever you choose. So you could totally make this a warm drink also. So to my glass here, I'm gonna add half an ounce of some maple syrup. Add about half an ounce, and that is about one tablespoon of maple syrup. So now I'm going to add just a little sprinkle of my, of my pumpkin spice. Just gonna add a little bit of that in. And then we've got our maple syrup and spice. Then I'm gonna brew my espresso right on top of that. Okay, to my glass, I'm gonna add about eight ounces of my milk. I'll go ahead and add some ice. I like these kind of smaller ice cubes. Now I'm gonna brew my double shot of espresso and pour that right over top. So you can drink it just like this, 
just kind of stir it a little bit and then drink it. Or a little trick I like to do is to use um, mixing cups and I'm gonna shake it together. So I'm just gonna pour right into my cup here. Put the lid on. There might be a little excess in there. So I just pour off whatever little excess there is. And give it a good shake. Very fancy. Pop off that lid. And then pour it right into your glass. And then you have a little bit of foam on top there. So that's fun. And there you have it. A spiced maple raw milk latte. really good. It's got a little bit of that fall warm spice to it. It's just sweet enough. It's not overly sweet, but it's still sweet enough to enjoy the flavor. It's really, really good. So give this a try. So this wall in our home stays pretty much blank until we add things for school onto it. So we have like some grammar vocabulary and our world map here. I'm gonna take these down and for fall, we're going to put up a little thankful tree. So I'm just gonna do it out of paper. I'm gonna put the tree and the branches up here and then we'll cut out little leaves and each day in the month of November, I might start it a little earlier, then we'll write something we're thankful for every day. So everybody in the family will participate, everyone that can. And for the little boys, we'll just write what they say, and then we'll add that to the thankful tree. And at the end of it, the tree will be full of leaves, all the things that we're thankful for, and we can look back at it and remember to thank the Lord for all of these things. I got this idea from someone at church, so not original to me, but I thought it was a really great idea and to keep going with an attitude of thankfulness for the rest of the season. So just as an encouragement to you, I'm gonna show you what I'm using to make this. This is not gonna be fancy at all. I'm just using what I had around the house. So I have some construction paper, some little poster sticky pieces, some tape and some scissors. That's what I'm gonna use and we're gonna make this thankful tree.
our simple little thankful tree. Now we just cut out some leaves to go on it and each day we'll talk about what we're thankful for and we'll either all together put a leaf on or everyone in the family can put a leaf on. You can do this any way you want. So I just talked with the girls and we came up with a few to go ahead and put up there so I can kind of show you what it's going to look like and hopefully by the end of the season it'll be nice and full of leaves. It'll look really beautiful. So I'll give you an update in a later video of what it ends up looking like. some children that would like a snack and I've been asked before about what I do about snacks for the kids because we don't buy a lot of like prepackaged snacks and things so I usually like to give them fruit in some form it's usually a good opportunity to get a serving of fruit in them so it's usually something like that a piece of fruit or a smoothie or some dried fruit or sometimes a baked good that I make, which is not fruit, but that's okay. Um, but it's something that's homemade. So I'm gonna show you a really fun snack that has a little bit of a fall theme to it also. And it's something that you could possibly make for your family. So my kids always love when we have this, it's apple nachos. So let me show you how we do that. Okay, so I've got three apples here that I've washed really good. These are honey crisp apples. You can use green apples if you want to, or whatever apple you like. expensive granola bars or protein bars for kids. You can just make apple nachos and they've got the chocolate chips are semi-sweet and we use unsweetened peanut butter. You use what you want and what you have, but this would be a really good option and there's protein in the peanut butter. So it's a really good snack for the kids and I am just using what I already had. I didn't have to buy anything extra or anything prepackaged. So this is a good idea to get you thinking about some other snacks you could use that aren't prepackaged things. And it's a nice little fall snack because it's centered around apples. So hope you enjoy it.
So we're gonna have a little impromptu poetry tea time today since we had those apple nacho snacks. And I made these little coloring sheets. I'll show you what it looks like. I made this on Canva. It's something that I have um, in order to make thumbnails for my videos and stuff. So I used it to make a little coloring sheet. And they have a lot of free things on there, but a lot of the really nice graphics and stuff you might wanna use as part of the paid membership. But since I have it, I'm using it to make things like this. So I've got Psalm 95 verses one and two here, and the girls are all gonna be painting that. Um, they enjoy coloring, but painting, you know, if it's an option, that's gonna be picked. So um, I offered to have them paint it if they wanted to. So they're gonna do that now. We're gonna read. Um, typically we do some poems during poetry tea time, but I thought today we would read all of this Psalm, Psalm 95 and Psalm 100. So we're gonna read those together while the girls paint and have some apple nachos. And then I have little boys that are starting to wake up. So they will join at whatever point they get in here. In the teacups, they have either some sweet tea or some apple cider. So nothing fancy, nothing that like took forever to brew or anything like that. It's just cold apple cider and cold tea. And they enjoy that. It's fun to drink it out of the little teacups. Just a fun little time to have together. So just wanna encourage you to do little things like this and keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a big complicated thing or anything fancy. Just enjoy time with your children and do things that are simple for you, but also enjoyable and special for the kids. Enjoy this time because as we all know, it won't last forever. this psalm that they are painting right now is perfect because the first two verses say, Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us make a joyful noise to the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving. Let us make a joyful noise to him with songs of praise. And tonight we are headed to our church to hear um, two people come and perform, but they are doing a hymn sing for us. So everyone is going to come and listen to them play and sing. We'll all do a hymn sing all together. So looking forward to that tonight. And this is the perfect couple of verses to start thinking about that and getting ready for it, that we're going to go and make a joyful noise to the Lord, to the rock of our salvation. So thankful for that. It's been a good day. Thankful that um, I have all of these children to care for and to love and that things can be simple, the wonderful blessings that the Lord has given. So now I'm going to show you a dinner. It's a fall dinner that I make every year. It's just a certain dish that is perfect for fall and so I make it each year um, during this season. 
So I'm gonna show that to you. It was filmed a few days ago, so I'll show you how I make that. It's a special fall pasta that I make, and that's something that you can maybe try out. This is peeled and chopped butternut squash. It's about two small butternut squash. I just thought the only thing worse than having to cut up butternut squash is watching someone do that. So I just spared you that and went ahead and cut up all the butternut squash so you can see it's here. That's how we start out with this recipe. We've got a little bit of avocado oil in the pan. And I'm gonna get my butternut squash in here. Gonna add in some ground sausage. This was actually Italian sausage links, but I've just taken the ground meat out of the casing and I'm gonna add that into my butternut squash. Alternatively, you could just keep the sausage in the links and just put the links in the oven and bake them and then slice them up to go into your pasta. That's a perfectly good way to do that, but my kids tend to eat it a little better when it's just ground meat instead of the little slices of sausage. So that's why I'm doing it this way. But the other way is perfectly good too. So I'm just cooking this all together in the same pan so that I can kind of keep it to just one pan here because I'm gonna use another pan for my sauce and a pot for the pasta. So I'm trying to keep the dishes down as much as I can. Here's the sausage and the butternut squash all done. Now in this pan, I'm gonna get some butter melting. This is gonna end up being my sauce. But to start with, I'm gonna fry some sage leaves here from my garden. So I'm gonna fry these up and then I'm gonna cut them to top my pasta with. So once I get the butter melted after I fry the sage, then I'm gonna get some garlic in here, get that all stirred up, and that is, and then I'll have a little bit of salt in there, and that's essentially my sauce. I'm gonna add a little bit of the pasta water into it also, and add the pasta into it, and then I'll have a really good pasta sauce for it. So at the end, to the pasta and the sauce, I will add the butternut squash and the sausage. Then I'll add the pieces of sage and I'll add in some roasted hazelnuts. Mix it all together and top it with some Parmesan also. And that's our fall flavors pasta. So I'm frying up the sage here. I'm gonna leave it in for a second and then turn them all and then put them on a paper towel to drain a little bit. Then I'll get the garlic in. So the pasta I'm gonna use is fettuccine for this. I like to use a flat noodle because it goes really well with the sauce and with all of the toppings like the sausage and the butternut squash. I just like a flat noodle for that. Here are my hazelnuts and they're just gonna go into the oven for a few minutes to roast and then I'll cut those up for a topping. So here's my finished sage and now to the butter, I'm gonna add some sliced garlic. I like to use sliced in this application because it has a more kind of floral um, flavor to it. So I'm gonna get this garlic cooking up and then I'll essentially have garlic butter here, but that's gonna be the sauce for our pasta. Okay, here are my roasted hazelnuts and my fried sage all ready to go ready to be the toppings on top of the pasta. So I've added my cooked pasta into the butter and garlic, and I'm just stirring that around. I saved about a cup of the pasta water, so I'm gonna pour that in to help make the sauce. And you may not need all of it. So I've turned up the heat a little bit, so I'm gonna stir this around some more and then add my other fillings in. Start with my Parmesan. Get that in here. Meat, sausage, and the squash. 
butternut squash. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt. Doesn't need a whole lot because of the sausage and salting the water properly for the noodles. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of pepper. And with that mixed in. I'm topping it with the hazelnuts. You could certainly leave this out if this is too weird of a thing for you. And the fried sage. And that'll do. I'm just gonna cover this up until it's time to eat. I'm gonna snag a bite of this before everyone gets in here to eat. Here it is. And this is a really big bite, but I'm just gonna go for it. Mm. So good. So good. That is so good. Every year, it turns out great. It's something my family enjoys, and it's just once a season in the fall. So I hope you give this a try and see how your family likes it. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope it gave you some good inspiration and hope it gave you some good ideas. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Stick around for more and I'll see you next time.